This is November 5th, 2020, and I'd like to start with a public sitting uh, that some of us did yesterday. This was uh, in downtown Rochester, uh, the third one this week, where uh, some some of the Sangha and non-Sangha members gathered at uh, our Liberty Pole. It's one of the very central um, parts of Rochester, kind of one of the hubs. Maybe there are a couple of hubs, but this one is maybe the more common one where uh, demonstrations and memorials take place. And that's what this was. It was uh, kind of a memorial or tribute or... um, Yeah, let's make it a memorial to Daniel Prude. Uh, He was the um, black man who, I don't know, a couple months ago, no, last February, uh, was effectively murdered by the Rochester Police Department. Um, He was having a real psychotic episode and with the snow falling and uh, outside naked and uh, not to repeat the whole story, but <clears throat> it's a brutal kind of treatment from the police, and uh, I guess it's still under investigation, but there's no denying the video that we saw uh, of him really being um, terribly mistreated by the police. It, it's, it started at the beginning of the video where they were <clears throat> seemed to be trying to work with him or uh, manage him in a fairly civil way and then it just sort of uh, unraveled from there and ended up being arguably uh, a murder and uh, this is not something that <clears throat> to be forgotten here locally especially and um, so uh, there's a contingent in in our local sangha uh, a contingent of people who have come up with this public, these public sittings, um, to memorialize him and in, in, in the hopes that this will not, this kind of thing will not happen again. Um, I think probably many of you have read or heard about the various places where we've done uh, Zazen in public. Uh, the, the 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 big one was in New York City a few years ago, uh, People's Climate March. There were maybe 350,000 people in New York uh, who were in this march, and about f- for 50 of us maybe um, hired a bus and uh, went down there, and we we sat. For these, uh, it was for a weekend. We sat on a, on a in Central Park on a on a knoll overlooking one of the main avenues of uh, Manhattan. And um, well, I wrote about this in Zembo because it was. I think I described it, and I still would describe it as one of the. I described it as the most inspiring, or the my peak experience uh, in public. Um, it was absolutely, absolutely amazing. But getting back to yesterday, so here we were, about a dozen of us. Uh, the weather was exceptionally warm, unseasonably warm for November 4th. Um, we were spread out social distancing on a a low wall uh, there at the base of the liberty pole uh, with uh, some some of the main downtown streets of rochester uh, crossing right there the main intersection of rochester and uh about a dozen of us um, sitting turned out we were <laughs> we were facing directly into the sun which in uh, 
65 degree weather uh, is still pretty toasty. But uh, people had made signs um, referring to Daniel Prude and Black Lives Matter. And, uh, and that was sort of the focus of this, this sitting. Um, and once again, once again, uh, seeing the others sitting there when I got there, um, I was struck by just the, the nobility of the Zazen posture. Not not everyone there uh, was sitting in the in the zanzan posture. Uh, I think there. I said there were some non sangha people. Um, but speaking now about our own zanzan posture that we all know so well, um, starting with a base, a stable, grounded base. Um, the limbs drawn together uh, at the center of the body, the back straight, the spine running up to the back of the head, the whole torso in alignment, ears in line with the shoulders. Um, to see, I can never get enough of it, you know, and this means in the Zendo too, in, in Sashin or outside, outside Sashin, to see people in Zazen, um, especially this more formal kind of sitting with a straight back, um, we're, we're embodying, uh, these qualities of, uh, dignity and attention and harmony, collectedness. This was also, yesterday was uh, the day after this big election, and uh, many things are still in limbo. The election hasn't been called yet for Biden or Trump. But uh, in that posture, and with the mind in that posture, um, where where are there Trump supporters or Biden supporters? What does that mean? Democrats or Republicans? Even time? Where is time? Where is where is future and past, or even present, when we're really? centered, um, and especially to the degree that we're free of thoughts. Um, I'm kind of gushing because I, it's just, it's just a marvelous experience. I hope, hope some of you may want to try this, uh, but, but in particular in, in, in public, it's, it's not the same as in our houses or in the Zendo because we have all this, this going on around us. Um, with the eyes down, of course, in Zazen, we're not really seeing uh, what's going on around us, but oh, do we hear? Do we hear it? We hear it better than, than if we were looking about. Um, it becomes sound, becomes so, so vivid. Even these, these banal, city sounds, uh, cars and trucks um, driving by different speeds and uh, some of them every once in a while with rap music or other kinds of music uh, coming out sometimes very loud and uh, shouts from the drivers or others. Usually we I couldn't uh, really make out what they were saying. It didn't matter. People were walking right in front of us, just just two or three feet, four feet away from us. Um, some of them were, oh, calling out words of encouragement. 
solidarity, thanks. Uh, it's really a remarkable thing. Um, if you're, if you're really managing to get beyond thought, then it is, it is a great, uh, kind of, it doesn't matter where you are, it, but, but the contrast, the contrast between the din, the uh, random city noises all around us, and the, the quietness that we can access in the mind is more noticeable than, of course, in the Zendo or in our own houses. It's, uh, it's wonderful. These wonderful words of the poet Shelley always come to mind when I'm doing public sitting, enclosed in a tumultuous privacy of storm. And we're reminded as we're doing Zazen, especially as half an hour turns into an hour and an hour. We think yesterday was altogether an hour and a half. Uh, that these sounds, and that's about all, maybe the, some breezes, some, I don't know, I didn't, I don't remember any particular smells, but it's mostly sound. That these, these sounds of all kinds, they, they follow the course of all phenomena, all things that we can even think about, uh, which is they arise. Okay, there's a new sound. And then it lasts a shorter or longer period of time. And then it disappears. Such is life. All kinds of things in this, in this world of thingness, all phenomena are coming and going. But in, in this eye of the hurricane that we can access within, uh, nothing moves. And isn't it the same with this enormous commotion of the election? This, this campaign that came to a, a climax two nights ago, finally, finally, this interminable campaign, presidential campaign, um, in one sense, and in the what is sometimes called the conventional sense, the relative sense, the world of differentiation, the this matter of a of a general election, presidential, and so forth, is hugely important. It could make the difference between four more years of wreckage, frankly either four more years of wreckage that we can't ever come back from, possibly, or maybe the beginning of four years of restoration, healing. So in that, in that side of the equation, the conventional side, uh, nothing could be more important than what we finally went through this week with the election, which is still, as I speak, is still unresolved as far as the next president-elect. But then on the other hand, it's from the side of the unconditioned, from the side of the timeless, the world of neither gain nor loss, nor this side or that side, um, 
and and it, it, it's it's much ado about nothing. It's both. It's hugely important, and it's nothing. But to be able to access this nothing that is that we can access if we can get beyond thoughts, to be able to access that can leaven for us this whole political drama and really can buoy us buoy us up in these next few days in the next few weeks and months and years this is what Zen practice offers this, this way of transforming uh, the world of, of things, of suffering, and us against them, transform it into what is beyond all that. What a, what a resource, what a gift to be able with the mind, with the, the, the with with uh, the training, the, pro- the Zen practice, to be able to alter things in that fundamental way. What a, what a gift. And it's ours. Every one of us has this, this ability to change how we experience all this. Well, Thanks for listening.